welcome to the 81st episode of Strawberry Patches Podcast. My name is Marina and I'm your host. I'm coming to you from beautiful Auckland, New Zealand, where I live with my family of uh, four, <laughs> my husband, my two little daughters and a uh, huge fiber family. As you can see today, I will talk about some squishy friends, animals and lots of colorful yarn, fiber and stuff that I've been spinning, knitting, dyeing, it's all there for you guys. Um, I'm so happy to be back, it's been a while, but I try to keep it somewhat regular podcasts. Thank you so much for joining me, for all your lovely comments, I super enjoy reading them. Thanks for being so excited about the knit along, I'm going to talk about that today as well. Thank you for all your hearts and subscriptions, that helps a lot. And uh, if you are new, welcome, welcome. I'm a Russian, um, I used to be an English teacher, but now I see myself as a mom slash knitter, spinner, dyer, fiber enthusiast, anyway. And uh, I want to share all of that with you. If you want to go back and see my previous podcasts, I have done how many, six years now, seven years, six years. And I take you along with me to all my adventures in Bali, Indonesia, where we got married and to Istanbul, where I started this podcast. I hope you enjoy those. And um, now we live here in New Zealand. And um, yeah, so I also have a shop where I sell my hand dyed yarn and fiber and today I have some fiber that I want to tell you about but first things first I have been quite busy but I have been working mostly on my on little fiddly things so I only have three finished objects for you but they are so cute let's start with the hat that I showed you last time this is the diamond hat that I knitted Oh, before I forget what I'm wearing, I'm wearing the lotus top that I showed you already, but I don't know, today I feel lots of energy and it's hot, so I'm wearing it. This is knitted up in um, cotton yarn that I got from Turkey, what's it called? I don't know, I'll link it down there. The pattern is lotus by Alena Malevich, and it's a super, super uh, enjoyable knit that I've done for summer. And I know for many of you it is summer, so I thought, yeah, why not wear it today? Although here in New Zealand it is winter. And uh, that's why I've been making hats. Well, just two hats this winter, but anyway. This is called the Diamond Hat by a Russian designer that I can't think of the name of. Um, I finished it. It's in my hand dyed yarn, forget me not. And ta-da, it's done. I love, I loved, well, how can I say? I didn't really love knitting it in the beginning, but in the end, when I got hang of all of the stuff that's going on here, as you can see, there's moss stitch inside the diamond. There's all of this cabling going on. It was a bit tricky to understand the pattern. And I probably, I wouldn't recommend it to you because you couldn't find it anyway. It's in Russian and I think it's not being sold anymore. Anyway, I finished this hat and I have worn it and it's super warm because of this folded brim. That's all, so I wanted to tell you about it. Let's move on to the squishy friends. As you can see, I am a big fan of Cynthia Vallée, the author of this wonderful book. I have finished the cat. Where's the cat? Here's the cat. I showed it to you many times since I got this book. I just, he's adorable. And his whiskers that try to always stick out in different ways. They're just so funny. So I didn't stop at that. So I knitted a friend. And in this book, let me show you the characters first because I have a question for you later. 
there are 12 characters. Oh, if you have the book, probably it's gonna be a bit boring for you, but just to... Moosh, the bear. Hazel, the squirrel. Forest, the bison. Bison. And Aggie, the sheep. Um, what's it named? Tina, the wolf. Giorgio, the cat. Horatio the donkey. My daughter wants me to knit this one for her. And then there is Mira and Alphonse the pigs. Nana the duck. And Dodo and Mimosa ducklings. Uh, Billy the raccoon. And Henry the orangutan. Here are the 12 characters. And it turns out today Cynthia, the author of this amazing book, announced that there will be a knit along which will start end of this month or first of August and I'm totally in I'm totally in because I just cannot stop I have knitted this softy oh, it's so squishy he's so cute I have dyed the brown especially for that I almost never dye brown because it's just something that I wouldn't want to wear but for toys I think it's a perfect brown sort of like a chestnut brown and I love her dungarees. So this is Masha. This is not Mush. I thought that it's a girl and that's why she's wearing the kind of peachy dungarees, which um, are very interesting construction. It starts in the middle and then you knit down and then you knit up. And I always love these details that Cynthia makes for all of her um, clothes for the toys. What can I say? This I knitted with 175 millimeter needles, which are very tiny, but I am a very loose knitter, so I just need to do that in order to keep the fabric dense. Then my bear, compared to the one in the pattern, is a bit bigger, which I don't know why, because I used small needles. This is finger in weight, but I love the size that she turned out. My daughter really wants to, Lydia really wants to play with it. She's four and a half. And I told her, look, this is mommy's. I will make you another one. <laughs> you should have seen my husband. He was laughing his head off when he saw me squishing and dressing them. So, um, yeah, I think she's just so cute. She's squishy. There's a little pattern, like a broken, not a broken rib, but sort of like a ribbing pattern. And this is all my hand dyed yarns. This yarn has a little bit of silk in it, so it's very drapey. Some buttons that I had in my stash and uh, I will be making more for sure. So once I finished her, I uh, immediately wanted to make another one. So here she is. It took me only five days to knit her and my, this dress took me a, quite some time. This is Aggie the sheep. I haven't really given her any other name. I'm quite happy with Aggie. That was Masha. This is Aggie. And she's adorable. I will probably make some beautiful pictures and insert them for you guys because I think they will show you better. This cute little ears, this garter um, hair sort of detail. And I used um, some faux ply actually light finger in weight for the body and hand spun alpaca for the hoops and it's really fuzzy yarn and it's so lovely. I love how simple details like this little mouth and a smile and this little ears make her so cute and adorable and this dress with this wonderful uh, checkered details. It was not easy to make because this is crocheted on later. I kind of expected her to have a tail but weirdly enough this is the first animal that I've done that doesn't have a tail which makes it easier and faster to knit. Don't complain at all. <laughs> so I'm going to make her the loopy vest that she has um, in the book. I see her like here. You see she's wearing this loopy vest, which is a new technique. I'm learning so much from all of these little um, guys. Oh, okay, so I want to make this one next. 
and I want to make this one as well and maybe that one because they're so cute so yes I will be definitely taking part in the knit along with little animals and I will probably dye some more yarn because I usually dye very like crazy colors and I need some calm one colored what are they called solids for these guys is that all yes okay so these are my finished objects uh, let me know which one is your favorite of the animals oh since she's here i will also show you a little odile she was the first bunny that i knitted and um, she's my first one so she's very special and she has three different out outfits and this is one of them oopsie this is the first one that i made for her and uh, the good thing about it is they're totally interchangeable like the animals are except for the bear the donkey and uh the bison bison tell me how to pronounce that um all of the animals are mostly same size so they can exchange clothes and look cute in all of them so this is Odile's dress and Aggie loves wearing it too there you go okay now on to whips of course I have been waiting for this West Knits Knit Along surprise sock along and spoiler alert I'm going to show you three clues done thing is very soon this Thursday I will release the final clue and the whole sock will be revealed so if you're still not there if you don't want to ruin the surprise look away I will tell you when to look back here is my contrast blast sock I so love my choice of colors I think they're just perfect perfect for this pattern and they're so Stephen West like they're boom they're out there my favorite part is the heel this little stitch pattern is so fun to make easy to make and I love it there is a little cable here going on and uh, it's quite clever I, at first I didn't quite think that this breaking the leg into two different parts is going to look good but he introduces the same kind of zigzaggy part here so I kind of like it I'm looking forward to finish it up and I'll show it to you okay if you've been looking away look back we're done with the spoilers the next this is a bit boring I have finished another sock that I was meant to finish in June <laughs> this was my June socks and I haven't even finished my hold on this is my July socks anyways Oh, I should have finished this a long time ago, but yay, one done. One more to go. This is not my yarn. This is some commercial yarn that I bought. Okay, so I have, I think I also have some whips that I haven't touched for a while. So no point in showing them. I was going to make another hat, but then I got carried away by all the characters and I just... Mm. Another thing I've been knitting on is swatches for my next spinning project. So let's move on to the spinning part. If you are not a spinner, I hope you will still enjoy watching this because I uh, just want to show you what kind of fiber and yarn you can get with spinning and my thoughts on yarn construction. Not by any means a pro or a qualified in that person to talk about it but I want to share my thinking and ideas so this year this month is Tour de Fleece which is basically an event that happens at the same time as Tour de France and spinners around the world are trying to spin as much as they can or set, set certain goals I set a goal for myself to spin uh, this amethyst fiber that I got from Anna Gratton and some more stuff Let's start with the Gotland fiber that I got at Wolfest. This is just incredibly soft. 
it is not as sleek as silk yarn but softness wise i would compare it to silky soft this is 100 percent gotland uh, baby baby uh, this was the hogget i think which means the baby sheep and i have spun it in natural gray natural gray and natural black and this one has been washed and this one not i have about 300 gram of the gray and 100 gram of that and i was going to combine it to make some sort of a vest yeah because it will be very warm it's not treated it's like really really sheepy and the yarn is very grippy i think it would be lovely for color work and yeah i'm looking forward to knitting with it something color worky okay more spinning so i've set up a goal to to knit up 600 gram of this i made this fiber which is i made this sprinkles 80 percent fine corridor 20 percent rayon spots from anna grutten and i have done it and i have warmed them all up i was going to show them in skein but then i said okay i'm gonna still i'm gonna i just can't wait to start so here it is how it looks look at all the amazing turquoise blue and pink sprinkles that are happening and here's my swatch this is the second swatch the first swatch that i've done is here i thought it was small and i had trouble with counting my gauge on this one i wonder if you ever if you were a spinner if you ever saw that happen maybe it's because it's a small swatch maybe because it's um from the beginning of the skein because when i start spinning i think my tension my the way i handle the fiber is a bit different than towards the middle of the end so these parts are done with very different needles four and a half millimeter and 375 millimeter but the gauge is the same 19 stitches i have no idea how this happened so after lots of consulting and my fiber friends and thinking i decided to make a huge swatch never do such big swatches but yesterday i did and it dried and i just love how drapey and lovely the fabric is it's not very see-through i don't think so and it just gives me really nice fabric that i like i was thinking about a pattern that needs 20 stitches per 10 centimeter gauge but this is i think 17 centimeters 17 stitches so um i don't know i might make up a new pattern find a new pattern that has the same gauge or tweak the pattern i was going to make the sunshine coast by heidi kermeyer it's been on my in my library library for a long time so maybe i should do that Maybe I will go a couple of sizes down and then when I've finished the, the upper part, maybe I will just do some modifications. But here is my Tour de Fleece project. And uh, more spinning. No, that's all spinning. That's all spinning I got for you guys. So now on to dyeing. I have um, had a few days when I got my little one into the kindergarten, so I dyed up some more unicorn cake yarn. And I did them in batches of three. That's why on my website, if you're really interested in purchasing them, and thank you for those who did, I have them in batches because they're a little bit different. I think this is all batch no, this is batch five. Okay, batch five, different. Batch four, different. Hmm. This is four. This is uh, four. Okay. So this is batch four. They're a little bit more yellow, these ones. And still very happy, very bright, and very cheerful. Then this is batch five which is a little bit lighter maybe with um, 
some lovely speckles happening look at those blue turquoise speckles and some not white but paler um i just think this would be so amazing in uh, so what's it called comfort fade cardigan maybe or like a hat or a cowl yes we're going to make a cowl by the way <gasps> Ooh. yeah if you can see i'm into all this bright stuff then i also this is decay weight and they're all merino yarns and they're all new zealand merino yarns this is my four ply high twist merino and the way I positioned the skein, it tied up differently. Like this one is quite a more subtle on some end and lots of yellow on the other end because it was lying differently in the pen. And these ones are like that. So this is unicorn cake on four ply, which would make really nice socks or maybe nice stripes for a stripey project like a, a little baby garment mm, or a blanket or there are so many things you can do with this okay and ta-da my first dyed fiber i haven't really given this one a name but peach comes to my mind peach and uh, something yummy like peach ice cream and this is a sock blend, which means there is 20% nylon, 80% New Zealand Corydale, which is so lovely to spin. I have spun this. This is not the first time I've dyed it. Yes, I have already showed you. I have spun two sets of 100 gram before, and this is the next one that I've spun, and I'm in love with it. It's now in the shop, but very soon I might be tempted to take it out of there and spin it myself because I just love how this bright pink is hidden among this pumpkin orange and sun yellow. I just think it's a wonderful combination of color and it's in the shop. Please buy it otherwise. <laughs> spin it soon I, and make some wonderful socks with it they will be much sturdier than the ones that I knitted oh more 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 okay last week I dyed up some more DK weight and uh, here they are I tried up different uh, sorry about not winding them properly I tried the same method as the previous ones but a different colors like there is a different blue here and a different pink and they are in some parts a bit paler but on the whole i think they're quite interesting too and these ones are a bit more autumn like which in the northern hemisphere it's going to be autumn soon i mean before you know it <laughs> i know we're in the middle of the season but before you know it it will be autumn and yeah they have a no name yet but they will be in the shop soon dk but all of the yarns that i'm showing today is new zealand merino 100 percent merino no nylon in it I think that's all the dyed fiber. No. Um, the next thing I wanted to share with you is some acquisitions. I have um, indulged in buying some fiber and I was watching Kylie and uh, Jill from the Etienne Yan podcast, Cup of Tien Yan, yes, podcast. Hi girls. They're so lovely. I really enjoy watching their podcasts and I was just intrigued by the fiber that Jill was spinning and I went online and I ordered it and she was describing it as heavenly fiber. It's a different breed of sheep. Uh, I think it's a rare one. Maybe I'm wrong, but 
it's so soft it's like merino soft so i don't really know if it's a blend of if it's a um, merino sheep crossed with something else but i got myself a comb top in the color fog which is 23.6 micron and uh, also comb top in the color storm which is 26.4 micron and these beautiful natural colors and this one is a finer micron it's 21 and the prices are different for for um the micron count oh, yeah it does feel a little bit softer but not much i mean 26 and 21 micron is not that bold it doesn't have the sheepy smell but it has this almost no smell it's really clean and a slight yeah a slight sheepy smell maybe but it's so soft and Oh, I think this will be the next thing that I'm gonna spin. And I'm thinking of maybe combining the three because I have how many? 100 of that. 200 grams of fog in the finer micron and 100 of the fog in the 26 micron. So I have 400 grams of this uh, wool and I'm thinking if I uh, do some sort of combine in it, maybe. What could I do? Maybe like combine and add a little bit of this into spinning all of that. Maybe one thread will be just one color. I will probably spin this fine one as a one thread and then add some um, kind of com combined. Yeah, I will make a sample and try it out. So really, really lovely. I forgot to tell you when I got this amethyst from Anne Graden, I also got some other stuff from her. And they are this ballerina that I already raved about. Her uh, silk mohair and nylon glitter blend that I have spun and I just wanted some more just because I love it. I don't have any plans for it, but this could be a nice hat if I do some fat ones because it has more hair in it and glitter. Also, I really wanted to try this avocado sprinkles, which has also rayon spots. And look at this, look at this gorgeousness look. It will be so much fun to spin because of all of the yellow, red, black, blue, orange sprinkles. I've made a little sample here because I just couldn't help myself. And I love how it looks. So this could be a really fun uh, cowl. <gasps> My mom is coming. So this is the, the um, exciting news. And uh, she's coming in November in time for my daughter's birthday. Lydia is going to be five. And in December, Lily is going to be two years old. So mommy, mom hasn't been here since Lydia was four months old. So it's going to be exciting times for us. Probably too busy for me. But uh, what was, where was I going with that? Yeah. So my mom is a blonde. And I was just thinking maybe I should make her a present with this beautiful fiber. Make her a cowl or a shawlette or an, an Merbius. I think I've seen one, a very pretty Möbius uh, on the internet, which could be fun to make. Or a shawl. Oh, I could make her the Odyssey shawl in this. That would be so beautiful. Yes. Yes, I should do that. Okay, now since we started talking about the cowls, let's talk about the cowl along. Thank you to everyone who supported my idea of having a cow knit along. Let's do it. I'm excited. I want to start with you guys. I'm going to make at least two cowls and I've given us a time frame of three months starting from August 1st until the end of October, 31st of August, Halloween basically. Start 1st of August and with Halloween and it will be held in Ravelry. I will um, open a new thread 
like I did with the other knit alongs and on Instagram so that we can maybe have people who are not on Ravelry join us as well. And there will be two prizes, one for the Ravelry group, one for the Instagram. It's going to be worldwide, but for those who are not living in New Zealand, I will see how I go about shipping because it's really expensive. So maybe I will ask the winner pay for the shipping if it's outside New Zealand. But if you're in New Zealand, you will get some of my yarn as a prize. Not Maybe not this one, but I'm just saying that you could get some yarn, squishy yarn from me. And uh, I will also try to have some designers donating prizes for us. Um, so yeah, other rules is that a cowl, what we, what I understand by cowl is um, something that you have around your neck that is not a scarf, so it's not one long piece. It's a piece that you pull um, from, you pull down, <laughs> you put like this and it stays around your neck. So, but I've seen some cowls that have buttons that works too. Like it's a scarf that has buttons and then you kind of wear it as a cowl anyway. So it's not a shawl, it's not a scarf, and it's not a poncho, it's something small and quick. And for example, I don't even have a cowl to show you because my husband, my daughters, they have their cowls that are made for them. I have one cowl which I don't quite like, so I'm not going to show it to you. But that's exactly why I'm doing it. I need some cowls. I want to make one uh, that is called like candy that I talked to you in the previous episodes. And one, I want to improvise something for my hand spun. So it could be something with, um, yeah, something with uh, maybe some of Anna Grattan's skeins that I have. And uh, my question for this episode will be, if you have any recommendations for like a 100 gram, 150 gram, 200 gram cowls, please let me know. Something simple because I have intricate stuff already with these little guys in my life and I want something quite fast and uh, simple. Oh, probably oh, this would be a nice cowl as well. Or I should maybe use up one of these. Oh, oh, there's one more sp spinning that I haven't talked about. Anyway, so here's my question for you guys. What are your plans? What kind of cowl are you planning to make? And uh, if you are taking part in this knit along, I will be sharing your projects, your finished projects that you put a hashtag or share in the Ravelry group. So if you don't want me to share, please let me know. Otherwise, for the next episode, I'll probably have a little slideshow at the end. And yeah, let's do it. Let's um, encourage each other to make some neck warming things for each other. Not for each other, for ourselves, for our loved ones. I have really enjoyed making the cowls for my girls. They look so cute in them and they're so easy to wear, unlike the scarves. I find that scarves for babies, uh, they scare me a little bit because when I was little, I heard a story in the kindergarten that I went to. Apparently, one of the kids got strangled by a scarf and the, uh, the caretaker, the person who was minding them, she went to prison for that. So I'm so, as a, as a, when I was teaching at a kindergarten in a school, I was scared of that. Also now as a mom, I'm scared of that. Like if somebody pulls the scarf and strangles the child. Anyways, so hence, I think cowls are a bit not so scary, maybe. So we're making cowls. Now quickly, uh, before you go, and hopefully you're still here, I have forgotten to show you this recent spin. I have finished it yesterday. And this is the fiber that I got at uh, Wolfest. 
it was fine merino i think it's 19 micron merino um and this beautiful you can see the theme <laughs> i'm just obsessed with these colors and i am going to wash it it's not washed yet but just look at this subtle color variation that i got on this it's so beautiful and it's very soft this merino is amazing i love spinning corydale but merino is something else too okay and uh, the last but not least i have podcast recommendation for you first of all of course my friends jill and kylie that um, have amazing videos about going to Fibertron. This is her la latest episode and the, all of their New Zealand yarn. If you're not from New Zealand, go check it out and see what they purchased to learn more about New Zealand yarns. Also, Helen get rich from the Mousy Makes podcast. I know um, I recommended it last time, but I just, I just, I think I fell in love with her videos she is so different from many other podcasters she plays music she's a music teacher so she plays the beautiful piano music for when she goes out and she composes poems that she shares which are so relaxing and she does some drawing bullet journal bullet journaling yeah and she also makes amazing cute um toys she's done two piggies from this book and they're just so adorable and her donkey is the reason why my daughter wants a donkey now i showed her where helen is showing her horatio donkey and my daughter was like i want this one <laughs> so we agreed this will be her birthday present so yes go check out those two lovely podcasts and uh, yeah let's make cowls together let's make some toys together um thank you so much for joining me and uh, i hope i will see you very soon with some cowls on my needles or maybe wearing a cowl because a cowl is such a thing that you can finish in one two three days if it's thick yarn and if it's just like a a short uh, a scarf infinity scarf I think what do you think let me know what you're going to make which cows you are willing to make and uh, let's start thanks a lot uh, greetings from beautiful new zealand and i hope to see you soon subscribe to not miss the next one and bye bye